As has been emphasized throughout this course, proper use of the risk management process will help you maintain the necessary tactical agility. The risk management process is a roadmap for utilizing all the tools at your disposal for reading conditions, assessing challenges, and measuring your successes on the fire ground. Even with all these tools in play, using the risk management process will never be as simple as working through a checklist. In the following videos, retired Assistant Chief Scott Jones uses the risk management process to analyze a structure, demonstrating how the risk management process brings the standard firefighting orders, watch out situations, and other conceptual tools to bear on a particular tactical situation. The first step of the risk management process is situation awareness. In structured defense activities, you need to pay attention to conditions that will impact fire behavior. This will enable you to more accurately forecast what the fire might do, especially when conditions begin to change. All right, so as you approach the structure, remember, if you're given your assignment as you're pulling up, take a look around you. Look up, look down, look all the way around at the, at the features, the terrain, the fuel condition, uh, how the fire might be behaving if it's nearby. Gather as much information as you can before we go into the structure because once you get in there, sometimes your field of view will be limited. If you look behind us here, you can see a lot of, uh, you see the terrain first off. You can see a lot of very dead looking fuel. Uh, there's also a chimney below us. Those are the things that you want to take in consideration before you get in there. If at all possible, come out here and take a look. Take a look at the fuel. Is it, is it dry? Is it green? Is it dead? Is it alive? All those things are going to contribute to the fire behavior. And remember, the fire behavior is what will ultimately determine whether you can stay here safely or not. All right, so now we're going to defend the structure here behind us. Uh, where do we place the apparatus? Well, in this case, there's a, there's a draw right below uh, the driveway here, so that may not be the best position for the engine. Remember, position is very, very important. The safest position probably is up the street parked next to the hydrant. In that case, you're going to need to extend hose lays down to the structure, but you have the assurance of a good water supply, lots of water. That could be important. You may be tempted to park the apparatus right here because the driveway's here. But keep in mind the terrain features that are below us that could impact the apparatus with fire. So let's see how the structure looks. Let's go on up here and take a look. Next is hazard assessment. So now you've been given this structure to defend. What do you do next? You're still part of that, making that situational awareness and hazard assessment as you come in. You haven't made a hard decision about whether you're going to stay or going to go, but one of the first things you start with is you take a look around and are there any temporary refuge areas available? If there isn't a temporary refuge area to, sh to shelter your crew in the event of a flare up of the fire, the decision's been made. But I see one behind us here. This area behind me looks like it has a lot of uh, place that the guys could get on the ground, uh, use the structure as a, as a shield from the fire. So we're starting off at a good step here. While we're here, let's take a moment and review the temporary refuge area and what it's what is for, what's it supposed to do for us, what does it look like? The idea of the temporary refuge area is just to give you a place to duck and take cover. It's a foxhole. It's for momentary relief in case the fire flares up beyond what you thought it was going to do. What's the requirement of that? Well, it should be non-combustible. And let's take a look at a few areas that we have right around here. We're on concrete. Uh, we have a concrete wall, block wall over here to the side. We have a garage that we can back up under and get away from the fires that comes up over the other side of the house and take cover, get down low. We can move around the corner if we have to and crawl into this area here where we're gonna be protected by the wall a wall here and a ceiling above us. Know where those areas are and make sure that the crew not only knows where they are but walks into them. Make them familiar with it so when the smoke's down on the ground they remember where that site is. Now that we're in our hazard assessment phase at the structure we're still developing situational awareness. Some of the early steps that we take as we, we've identified that we have temporary refuge areas we need to prepare our position for a, a viable defense. And the first steps that we take is to begin to open it up, make room for our people to be able to move about freely. Remember, we may be operating in the dark. We may be operating in very dense smoke conditions where visibility is poor. You have to have your structure set up just like you do at home. You can walk through your house at night. You know where everything is. The same has to happen here. Walk your people through it, open everything up, 
move the chairs, move anything that might be an obstacle in their way and prepare for battle. Now we're going to have to take a look in the backyard. We're going to have to look over the hill to see what potential terrain and fuel hazards we face. But as we do that, as we move about, we need to look for those hazards that we just talked about around here, about our ability to move about freely on our defense position, starting with a gate. Gates are intended to do what? Keep things inside, trap things in place. We need to eliminate that hazard. Not only do we open the gate, but we need to take a moment, a uh, hose hook or anything, and secure the gate open so there's no way this gate's going to close on us at a time that maybe we need to come back through here quickly. Well, we're still in our hazard assessment phase. And keep in mind, what's important here, the decision that you're trying to make as the engine boss, is can you be here safely? We're going to get to the structure in a, in a little bit about what to do about that. But right now, we're still thinking about can we be here safely? Is this going to be a prep and defend? Or is it going to be a prep and go or a check and go? How do we do that? First steps are look at the terrain features. Look at the condition of the fuel bed and try to figure out, make a forecast of what do you think the fire is going to do? How intense is it going to be? Can I be here safely with my people? Now, part of hazard assessment, of course, is look up, look down, look around. And that's where we are right now. We're down here assessing the fuel conditions. We're assessing the terrain features to try to help us understand the potential fire behavior when the fire comes towards us. I'm standing in a ravine. We have a lot of dry, flashy fuels below us. The homeowner's done a good job of limbing up the, uh, the shrubs, but this time of year, if it's, let's say it's in the fall and everything's real dry, all of this will burn. As we continue to assess, basically we call this the battle space. We're assessing the battle space, looking where we're gonna be able to operate, moving the thing, the hazards out of the way. And now we're looking at the fuel conditions to figure out what's this fire gonna be like? How do we do that? How do we arrive at those decisions? Don't forget the IRPG, it has all this information is all in the book for you. And the risk management part that we're in right now is hazard assessment. And what are those? They're the watch out situations, and they're the look up, look down, look around. Right here in the book will help guide you do this. Do you have time during the fire to do it? Maybe. But if you have time, you should take the book out and take advantage of the information that's provided in there for you. Well, we're approaching that time when we have to make that decision as the engine boss. Are we going to stay here and defend, or are we going to do a prep and go? I think it's defendable. I think we have an opportunity here. There are some definite challenges. The terrain's very steep. A lot of unburned fuel below us. It's in a, in a dead and dying condition. But based on the fire behavior that I'm forecasting for today, this is doable. The caveat is, though, we still have to prepare our battle space. All these chairs and the kids' toys and so forth behind us is what's going to trip us up if all of a sudden the fire behavior exceeds what we think it's going to be, and we have to leave suddenly. Remember, every plan we make has to have an option. It has to have a, a, a way for us to get out if all of a sudden the conditions exceed what we expected. After hazard assessment is hazard control. This is where you begin working out mitigating strategies for the potential dangers you've identified. Remember to maintain agility in your strategy. All actions need to be taken in light of the fire's behavior which, in spite of your best efforts, can easily change. Agility means that you consider all your tactical options and that you have several contingency plans in place in case your initial approach is unsuited to changing conditions. As has been discussed before, the acronym PACE can help you remember to make a primary, alternate, contingency, and emergency plan. Okay, now we've gone through our hazard assessment phase and we've decided that for now this will be a prep and defend. So what's next? The very next step is the hazard control in the RPG. In hazard control, the first elements that you want to consider are the fire orders. How did we arrive at this decision to begin with? Well, we knew what the first fire order was. We, we knew what the fire weather was for the day. We knew what the forecast was. We're, we're taking the weather while we stand here. Second fire, know what the fire is doing at all times. We're keeping an eye on the fire that's coming. And three is basing all actions on current and expected behavior of the fire. That's how we arrived at the decision to stay here to begin with. The next fire, number four, have escape routes and make them known. That's what this represents behind us. This is our escape route to get back to the safe side of the structure. 
All right, so the application of pace, I'm going to talk about that for a moment. We've gone through our situational awareness, we've done our hazard assessment, now we're down on hazard control where we've decided we're going to prep and defend. We've got our hose line selected. They're very important that we decide that we've got the right hose in place, but our whole plan right now is to have hose lays in place here and pour a lot of water to the fire and knock it down before it gets to the structure. That's our primary plan. The problem is, what if the fire exceeds our fire behavior forecast? What if it's a lot more fire coming up the hill than we thought? This is where your alternate plan comes into play. You as the captain or you as the engine boss might tell your folks, hey, this is more fire than we thought. Let's go back to the other, our TRA and the backside of the structure and we're just gonna wait until the fire subsides a little bit will re-advance and come back, reman the hose lay, and go back to fight the fire. So that, that would be our alternate plan, to go back and get in our TRA and just wait for a little bit. Now, if that doesn't work, and the fire continues to press us, it's the time that you as a supervisor have to really be on your game. You're in the contingency plan, you're in C now. It's all about your firefighter safety. We're no longer on the offense. We realize the fire's far exceeded what we thought it was gonna be and now it's your time to decide what to do next. You're in a temporary refuge area, which means you always need to have another uh, move planned out, and it may be into the structure. You may take refuge inside the structure, but you are now taking refuge. You are now protecting your people. You get inside the structure and it begins to burn. You realize we can't stay here. You come back out and say down the driveway and up to the engine. That would be your contingency plan. Regroup at the engine and decide what to do, to do next. But let's say that you come back out of the structure to head down the driveway to hit the escape route to the engine and the fire's laying over the driveway. We have just hit the E part of pace. It's all about your firefighter survival and you are immediately on the ground and deploying your shelters. That's why picking the TRA when you first get here is so vital that if you completely miss the fire behavior, which can happen easily, at least you have a place to make sure your people survive. Decision point is the time to implement your plans. The key is that you have worked through the other stages of the risk management process in preparation for your decisions. Let's take a moment and just review where we are in the process. When we first arrived, we did our situational awareness, and we walked around the structure and does our, done our hazard assessment. And we've even gone through the hazard control using the fire orders to guide us and help us make that decision. And we've applied PACE as a contingency planning mechanism in case we've misjudged the fire behavior. So those three steps are very, very important before we ever go to work. You could do them quickly with practice, but you do have to follow that process. Now we're at decision point. And decision point is that moment where you, as the engine boss, are going to determine whether you're staying here or whether you're going to leave. And the first thing you have to ask yourself is in that decision point, have I done everything I can to help prepare the site and my people for the battle they're about to get involved in? Has all the information been based on the fire behavior forecast? But still remember, it's just a forecast. It's the best you can do, but remember you can be wrong. And finally, have you briefed everybody? Is everybody clear on the plan? Now when I say brief everybody, not only have you told them what the plan is, but you've walked them all around so that everybody understands where all the, the features are, where the tactical refuge areas are, uh, where the escape route is and so forth. You absolutely have to do that. That's the decision point. Very critical moment, but that's when you decide you're going to work. The final step in the risk management process is evaluate. So for our risk management, we're down to the final step, first one being situational awareness, our hazard assessment, our hazard control, then our decision point where we just gave the crew the briefing and we made sure that it was all based on what we thought the forecasted fire behavior is. We get down to evaluate, there's a couple of very important things to evaluate here. One is the human factors, that's the people that you're working with, the people that you're supervising. When you just gave them the briefing, were they understanding what you said, have them repeat it back to you? Are they distracted? Are they tired? Are they busy on their cell phones? Again, human factors is a huge element here because without the people doing what they're supposed to do for you, you're not going to be effective. And the last part is that situational awareness or the evaluate the situation. 
once you get started with this, how's the plan working? Is it working out like you thought it would? And if it isn't, it's up to you to adjust it. And so the risk management process is a continuous cycle. We start in situation awareness, we work our way through the information we see, we develop a plan, we brief our people, now we stand back and evaluate how is it working. And if it isn't working, it's up to you to change it. The skillful application of the risk management process, the standard firefighting orders, watch out situations, and other tools in the IRPG will take years of practice to truly master. Begin using these tools now to make wise fire ground decisions, saving lives and effectively fulfilling your assignments. Mm -hmm.